Assalamualaikum warahmatullah uh, dan good afternoon to all. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. As uh, usual, before we begin the class. To all the Muslims, we begin by reciting the Al-Fatiha and the Salawat first. Eh? Fatiha. Okay, anything you want to discuss by your assignment submission? Everything? All, or they all have submitted or not? I checked That's that all, uh, all assignments have been submitted. Huh? Assignment works, huh? Ada satu grup lambat eh. Lambat dekat dua jam. Sejak lebih dua jam. <coughs> so next time. Don't be late lah eh. Don't do job last minute. Okay. And then the other thing is uh, turning in. Turning in you have problem is it? You have any problem? Any problem turn in? Turn in submission? Any group that didn't, didn't submit the turn in? Or the turn in score or, or the turn in score is more than 20%? Or um, you submit twice? Ada? Sir, dengar ke suara saya? Is... Ah, dengar, dengar, dengar. Apa cakap dulu? So, saya daripada grup 13, um, hari tu turn in in tu expired, expired kan? So, ha. kami submit the assignment without the turn in in report. Boleh ke kalau kami submit another one time using our personal turn in in? Sebab saya baru perasan on on the main group yang sebenarnya boleh guna our personal turn in in report tu untuk attach sekali dalam our group assignment punya report. Actually, uh, turn in in report only 
uh, mind can in a bottle. Eh? Uh, the problem exists uh, when uh, your score is more than two, 20%. When 20%, you cannot sub resubmit again. Uh, that's why I told you in the all in the Guru WhatsApp, usually students uh, do their own turning in first. Once they get 20% and below, then you submit in my online portal for the turning in. Understand? Uh, Actually, uh, kami dah buat dulu uh, and dia below 10%, uh, sir. And then, bila nak submit, dia already expired. Yang, yang, uh, yang expired, expired date tu lah kan? Dah awal kan? Saya tak, uh. tak, tak, tak perasan. Nanti tak apa, saya. Tapi, tak submit lah. Uh, kita submit yang group assignment punya on time uh, before due date. Tapi, we didn't attach the turn in uh, report on our group assignment report. Can we resubmit okay. with the turning in report again? Uh, my group also, sir. I'm not submitting the turning in. Just how many? Just, uh, 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 how, uh, you you raise your hands. Uh, how many group yang tak submit turning in? So group three also didn't submit the turning in report. Yeah, the turning in result attached at the last page of the final report. Okay, you raise your hand in the chat. Okay. Raise your hand. All right, so one group one only. Eh? Uh, don't don't all the members raise your hand. No, one group one only. I want to know how many groups. Saya guna personal doktor. Masa saya hantar sambil air tu. Macam mana? Oh, you guna personal. Kenapa guna personal? Pasal yang saya lewat air tu, saya guna personal. Kalau kabut je. Hmm. Okay lah, tak apalah. This time, uh, this time you can use personal lah. But next time, uh, do your personal lah. The way they do it is just like that lah. Uh, you do your own personal first. Once you got the result below twenty, then you submit to the portal, right? Uh, uh, some cases happen that uh, they do their own. It's below twenty percent. When they submit through my portal, uh, the score is higher. Uh, that uh, that is uh, that is finalized lah. Meaning that you're not you you're not doing it according to the requirements, right, the schema, less than 20%. Uh, that's why it's important for you to achieve way lower 20% uh, by doing your own turn in. Because when you submit to the portal, usually it's the same, usually. Nah. But sometimes it happens that uh, uh, your submission to the portal is higher than your score. Uh, so I will take only the portal. Lah. I don't I don't care about the, the personal personal turning in that you said. Right. So uh, I just counted the portal. Right. So uh, I think oh, ni tak boleh buat ni. Tak boleh buat apa? Reactions. Dia ada raise hand tak? Raise hand. Clapping ada kan? Raise ada, sir. Ha? Ada raise hand. Ada kan? Kat sini ha. ada beberapa orang ni. Ya, yeah, tak nampak apa ni. Dekat partisipan. Oh, dekat ni. Dekat skrin ni. Kau buka dekat chat ni. Saya tengok dekat chat. Dekat chat tak ada lah. Ada, ada tujuh kumpulan. Lapiu atas tu. Ah, ha, kira-kira sekejap. Alright, tujuh kumpulan ni. Eh? Okay, tujuh kumpulan ni tak submit, didn't submit the turn in. Alright, so uh, uh, others are submitted eh. Alright, so uh, just have one group, uh, you will be submit, you can submit again. Alright, uh, uh, through the portal. Alright, okay, uh, please mention uh, those seven group that not submitted the turn in yet. Please uh, mention the group number. The group numbers eh, uh, dekat uh, WhatsApp so that I can tell you check dengan portal lah. Alright. Okay. Okay, so not to that. So, tak apalah. You, this time we do your own. Tak apa. Uh, you do portal pun okay sebab dah bercampur kan semua kan. Hantar pun pening saya nak check semua banyak. Jadi tu uh, you can submit. Cuma submit je lah. Huh? Submit the turning in. Okay. So next time, uh, just submit through the portal. Uh, you you just can submit once through the portal, but before you submit, you must make sure it's lower. Lah. Okay, and then you submit. 
Right? Plus one, you submit. You cannot do correction on it. Right? Uh, so just for the record of turning in 20, below 20%. That's all. Eh? Uh, tapi process of reduce, uh, uh, lowering the percentage is your your own. I think you you, you well was right about turning in in your process. How to make it lower, right? <coughs> Alright, so it's clear the problem of the name. Uh, Kalau yang saya guna personal, hantar tu tak apa ke nak kena redo buat balik? Tak apalah, saya dah buat semi hantar lah kan. Tapi uh, inform the group, eh, dalam tujuh group tu. Inform dalam dalam group asap. Group mana yang tak submit lagi the name. Alright, uh, so you inform so I take note lah. Because dalam dalam portal yang dah submit assignment tu dah ada lah semua kan. Uh, cumanya the name tu ada yang tak submit. Ha, jadi kalau saya nak buat again nanti uh, lagi eh, havoc kan. Jadi lebih baik saya terima lah apa yang dah buat. Walaupun saya pakai own personal. Tak apalah. For this time lah. Eh. Okay. Faham tak? Huh? Faham? Understand? Faham, sir. Ya, yes, sir. Ya, yes, sir. No doctor. We, we, uh, what is no doctor? We, when, when who? You don't don't understand. Oh, you refer to which question? Ni? When who? Where is when who? Ah uh, yes, doctor. Ah, uh, what do you mean by no? Ah, uh, this time you asking have submit. I say have submit already. No problem. Oh, okay. Okay. No more question? Sir, nak tanya. Ah, uh, group saya tu tinggal ojek T. Boleh submit pandik ke? Ya, yeah, ini. Siapa ni? Uh, Natasha. <coughs> tak boleh. Uh, kalau gitu, awak submit semua sekali lah. Okay. Huh? Uh, okay. Inform, inform, inform group eh? Group uh, yang sampai uh, terus sekali. Tak inform dalam WhatsApp saya nak check ni. Okay. Huh? Kata you nak submit dulu sekali. Uh, okay. Awak dah submit yang, yang, yang asal kan? Uh, yang asal dah submit. Uh. Sorry, saya tak kira yang tu lah eh. Saya ambil yang baru lah. Uh, okay. Terima kasih. Kalau tak ramai tak apa. Kalau memang ramai susah lah kan. Kena buat semula lah semua kan. Lagi ada soalan? Any question? No, Doktor. Hmm. Good. Okay. For that matter, we can proceed our class. Um, wait for your second assignment. Bila you punya semester break? Uh, tiga hari bulan 12 ke? Desember. Okay, third December. I think your assignment will be before your semester break. Okay. And then after semester break, uh, start uh, organizing your the talk event. Eh? Uh, so uh, hopefully by when you coming up after the break, uh, we can start having talks on uh, maritime. Eh? Alright. So we start our our class today. So our class today is about ships. We gone through uh, uh, talking about uh, characteristic uh, uh, maritime. Uh, uh, legal framework uh, based on syllabus and then we go for the type of operations liner operations uh, liner is quite easy uh, explanation of liner and eh? and then we go for uh, number ni? tram tram is uh, is also a clear difference between tram and liner and in tram we further up to the chartering because chartering is about tram 
So we have gone through all the, the structuring uh, types, uh, the three types of structuring, the wave structuring, the time structuring, and then the bare boot structuring. Eh? And uh, also along the way, we discuss about tensions and uh, demolish and detentions, whereby demolish and detention to understand their two perspectives, import perspective and export perspective. You should understand that one now. And then we further up, today is on the type of ships. Type of ships, eh? So the type of ship, this, if we look at the syllabus, is chapter 5 and chapter 6. Chapter 6 focusing on tankers, right? Uh, but chapter 5 uh, on other ships, eh? Okay? Today we were highlighting about uh, container ships, right? So, talking about ships, eh? uh, there, are, uh, there are two categories of ships. First is cargo ships, second is uh, passenger ships. Uh, for this uh, uh, course, you focus, you're more focusing on uh, cargo ships. Eh? Passenger ship, uh, uh, we'll touch a little bit. Why we don't touch more? Because of uh, passenger ship is not quite um uh, common in uh, especially in the uh, asian countries because passenger ship uh, is more prominent in the usage and in the what uh upon the money services uh, in the western countries right western countries more developed countries and more uh, rich countries but nowadays china also getting getting richer so maybe in future uh, the the passenger ships uh, also uh, have been popular in uh, in in the east eh? in the east especially in China. Okay. Right. Uh, we actually Malaysia Malaysia has embarked on this uh, passenger uh, ship services by Genting Genting Group. Right. Uh, they have a cruise uh, cruise ships that. Um, uh, the travel along uh, uh, from Penang to Portland to Singapore. Uh, sometimes they they they, they harbor at uh, Kuantan at Kijal there. Kijal, there's a there's a port uh, for passenger ships at Kijal. Uh, uh, but I think no more. Uh, currently no more. Uh, what did they have? And then they travel straight to Hong Kong by ships, uh, by these ships uh, handled by Genting Group. Eh? Uh, Go Chok Tong, eh? Go Chok Tong, eh? Genting Group. Eh? Go Chok Tong also uh, passed away. Eh? Uh, that group, uh, because I, I read the books uh, by Go Chok Tong, uh, he envisioned that one day, because Go Chok Tong is from China, eh? coming, uh, immigrate, uh, migrate to Malaysia to make a living in Malaysia. And he has been a living all right yeah, by being the one of the richest men in Malaysia. Uh, in just 40 years, uh, in just uh, 10 years, he can hardly be a millionaire. But in 30, 40 years, he'll be a billionaire in Malaysia. But he's from China. Uh, so, and he envisioned saying that one day I will come back to my hometown by uh, with a ship, a cruise ship. So, because of that uh, envision, he... Uh, venture in the cruise ships business and they have a big ships uh, to move people from uh, Southeast Asia to Hong Kong right, uh, and uh, China. So uh, these are uh, cruise ships, passenger ships, we focus less because it's more on uh, leisure, leisure travel. Eh? Uh, so passenger in, in this part of the world is more on leisure. Some passenger uh, uh, is, is talking about liner. Liner service passenger is move, uh, totally about mobilizations of people from point A to point B. They have been separated uh, from the land, uh, been separated from each land by sea or by streets. All right, like Penang, Penang is short streets. Eh? Uh, like in, 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 in Europe, there's many countries that have been connected to each other by streets. Uh, they want to have bigger ships. Eh? Uh, so, uh, liner for passenger. Uh, mobilizations uh, in Southeast Asia and also in Asia lacking, eh, tak kurang, tak banyak. Yang banyaknya sungai lah. 
Uh, sungai ni dengan dengan tas dengan sungai ni usually dia refer to inland waterways eh. Inland waterways ni dia categorize sometimes dia categorize by uh, land transport because of inland. Uh, but for uh, maritime for sea uh, uh, liner passenger service for sea in South Asia is 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 lacking not many. Even no no none at all eh. Uh, dulu ada macam I told you before right like uh, ferry Malaysia kan ada tapi no more uh, now, now currently no more uh, so that's why we don't focus much on the uh, passenger ships but we just talk about the design of the ships only our passengers eh? the type of passenger ship lah eh? but we focus more on cargo uh, and because cargo is the the cargo ship is the most important ships for trading eh? for business for import and export right For a country like Malaysia, it's a maritime country like Singapore, like Indonesia. Like most of the Southeast Asia country, it's a, it's a maritime country surrounded by seas. Uh, so maritime transportation, especially cargo ship, is a very important mode of uh, transportation for economic development of the country. Right? So cargo ship are classified into various types based on purpose, size, type and cargo. Type of cargo is So the cargo ship types for uh, the uh, based on the purpose. What is the, what is the purpose of the uh, ship? What is the size of the ships? Uh, the purpose will will will, uh, will influence the size, and the type of cargo also will influence the size. As you all know, uh, uh, this also been related by the type of services. For example, like liner services. Mostly when you talk about liner, mostly. Uh, is about containerizations and and um, tram services or shipping services. Mostly we talk about um, bulk cargo, break bulk cargo, and the other thing is that uh, special purpose uh, ships. Eh? Special purpose ship is a ship that designed to perform a specialized duty. Uh, for example, like uh, humanitarian ships. Uh, uh, for example, like. Um, Row, row, row ships only for uh, mobilization of uh, vehicles, uh, right? Uh, for uh, uh, power generation, power generator ships. So the whole ship provide power, electricity. Uh, this ships been is uh, what uh, purposely uh, for helping people in disaster. Uh, aid, uh, giving relief aid people in disaster prone area, in conflict prone area, whereby there's made there's many. Uh, effect of disaster to the place, then there's no current at the electricity. So they provide electricity, especially this electricity is very important, especially for the medical services, right? For medical and health services. So the ships totally uh, function to supply uh, electricity to the area. Uh, it's, it's, it's very big ships, but just totally supply electricity. And there's one ship on uh, uh, medical ships. Hospital, hospital ships. So they provide hospital for uh, people that in prone area, danger, but in, in, in conflict prone area or disaster prone area, or even if they go visited, they go and visited uh, uh, port or countries that uh, poor countries. Eh? They cannot uh, serve the, their, their people well in terms of health uh, and medication. So they go for the, the they go as a, what a, a social. Uh, 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 corporate social responsibility of the world uh, to to the country that is uh, less uh, fortunate countries lah, like in Africa, in uh, Middle East, right? Uh, they go there and provide their services for health and uh, medical health services. There are many types of later on you will know that some a uh, uh, lot of professional types of uh, purpose, special purpose type of ships that serve only uh, one purpose. Uh, like just like I told just now, right? Uh, so now, but now we go for cargo ship types. Eh? So usually with the the designing of cargo ships, uh, uh, mostly uh, based on the economic factor, lah. economic factor. So when you talk about economic factor, definitely you go for to achieve the economy of scale of the mobilizations of the cargoes. Meaning that economy of scale, meaning that the more cargo you carry, the less uh, per unit of cargo cost. Right, so these are the meaning of economic factors, and also economic factors in terms of um, uh, based on journey and based on uh, the economic growth of the world. Right, so when the world economic growth is expanding, is growing, 
so they have they they be the building or designing ship that are more bigger and bigger, right? Uh, for example, like in the 90s, in the 80s, when the time economic boom, they have uh, bigger ships to come out. Uh, 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 manufacturing of bigger ships and building of bigger ships. Uh, so these ships are purposely to carry more cargoes, uh, more containers, especially yeah, more containers. All right. So uh, and also based on uh, the type of cargo, like for example, uh, uh, crude oil. Crude oil usually they have big ships or big tankers to carry a lot. I uh, mean, large volume of crude oil uh, to from location of the the, the resource location to the uh, 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 needed area of the world, uh, needed country of the world. So some countries they have no production of oil. For example, like uh, Singapore, like what Japan, Hong Kong, right? Like, and in other countries, they don't have oil. They totally depend on these uh, uh, tankers to provide them or supply them with oil, right? Uh, petrol, oil, or ONG, yeah? right? Uh, but Malaysia have oil. But other countries like Japan, Korea, I think they have, they, they, maybe they have a few, uh, what, uh, all, all uh, resource cent center, but not, not, not much that can uh, uh, accommodate their needs. Eh? So they need to import more. Like even in US, in the US they have a lot of oil, oil drills, but the amount of oil they have is not much to uh, accommodate the whole country with the demand. So they still uh, rely on the Middle East supply of the oil. Uh, see? So uh, these are the situation whereby they need the bigger ships to carry. Eh? So that's why you can you can you you can see tankers, eh? uh, the most bigger ships in the world are tankers. Eh? Uh, so they carry a lot of cargo, a lot of oil. Uh, but they are highly sophisticated now because of uh, to avoid any uh, what oil spill. Eh? Uh, just imagine if the whole tanker all spill in the sea, so it will have a very uh, catastrophic effect to the environment. Eh? <clears throat> so, the owner of the ships want maximum return on their investment, definitely. Any business people, any owner of the business people, uh, uh, business need to have ROI maximum. They invest one billion, they want to get two billions. Right, and they want to get three billion or even more. So it's logic, it's logical. People doing business, they want to have profit. No point if people doing business uh, without considering on profit, right? And there's no, there's no such thing as CSR all the time. Uh, the most important thing is profit, uh, dollars and cents. Which means a ship construction not only depends on the current economic necessity, but also other factors exist. Not only on economic factors, but other factors that help them uh, to gain more ROI in future. Because when you build a ship, you're not talking about one year, two years eh, business. You're talking about 20 years, 30 years business ahead. Eh? 50 years, even some ships are 35 years, 40 years. Eh? Uh, so it depends on the owner itself. Eh? So the factor of future, the adaptability also plays a part. Because in future, you cannot predict correctly, you cannot predict sharply, you cannot predict uh, truthfully about the future, especially talking about 10 years, 20 years. But you can, uh, you can see the trend. You can learn from the trend, uh, historical trend eh, of the uh, of the business, eh, of the apa, the, the ship, ship buildings, eh, and also the economic world economic growth. Eh. Uh, so you can learn from history. Uh, so that uh, why we learn, we need to learn from history, so that so we can focus, we can uh, focus, not focus, eh, focus, focus for uh, future, right? Future trend or predict future trend. That will help in making up decisions, eh? especially in building new ships. Eh? Okay. Design of vessel for construction based on following factors. Uh, yes, this is the uh, vessel construction senior. Uh, uh, influence factor. Eh? First is dimension of the ship. Uh, the 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 what the measurement of the ships. Uh, what you actually you want the size of the ships. Eh? Uh, and the displacement. What uh, actually the the ships uh, tonnage, and also how much you want to carry cargo. What is the cargo displacement capacity of the ship? And that one you need to decide. 
and the stability of the hips. Definitely, you want a hip that is stable. Eh? How to produce a stable, a stable hips by carrying a large amount of cargo? Uh, so how uh, you don't want a hip that can collapse, eh? can overturn, or you, can, you don't want a hip that uh, that uh, what uh, will jeopardize your 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 cargo that you carry, right? Uh, so you need to have a stable hips. So you need to plan earlier what is the requirement they need to be a, to have a stable hip, eh? based on the dimension of the hip and also based on the displacement tonnage of the hip that, that, that should be carried. Then the propulsive characteristic and hull form. Propulsive characteristic is uh, referring to the engine, right? Engine and the source of the engine, eh? source of the engine, eh? you did want to go for Definitely nowadays, no more, no more, apa? Uh, apa? no more traditional bunker. Now you must use bio bunker, right? Talking about IMO 2020, all ships must use a bio bio oil, a bio bunker, eh? uh, so that it will reduce the uh, emission to the air. Not reduce the emission to the air, reduce the toxicity of the emission in the air. Right, you must remember the difference between these two: eh? reducing the emission and reducing the toxicity of the emissions. And, and, and you, if you learn later on that a bunker from a traditional ship bunker, traditional ship bunker, is highly toxicable, 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 highly toxicable, eh? very toxic to the environment, to the to to the air, because the the bunker is very thick. Eh? It's not like put your own petrol car, petrol pump, uh, any petrol or diesel. It's very thick. Eh? So just imagine if this all the process and the emission uh, due to the process will be released out. And uh, the effect of the toxicity of this emission is high, is, is great to the environment. Although compar comparatively, the amount of ships as comparatively to the amount of cars in the world or bus or trucks in the world is lesser, meaning that ships is lesser than the whole total amount of cars and uh, road transportations in the world, but the level of toxicity is higher. Okay? So that is this is there's a problem, right? right? And also uh, uh the preliminary general arrangement between the owner and the, the manufacturer of the ships, the builder of the ships, uh, what is the requirement that the owner needs for extra requirement, uh, extra request uh, um, between the carrier and the uh, ship builders? Uh, maybe they have they need a special arrangement on building a very uh, a comfortable uh, lodging for the staff, uh, facilities for the staff, right, for the crews. Eh? Right, they maybe they want they, they can put extra, no? and also the principal structural details. So principal structural details it depends on the IMO requirements of ship building. So IMO have a very detailed uh, guidelines and requirements for ship buildings, uh, ship emission everything for ships. So the ship builders need to adhere to the requirements so that to ensure the safety and seaworthiness of the ship, right? Safety to the crew and also to the cargo, right? Uh, seaworthiness of the ship so that it can be used uh, efficiently and effectively on the, in the sea to carry cargoes and people, right? So these are the things that, uh, factors that affecting the ship design and building eh, uh, in the world. Eh? Then we go to the type of ships. Ships are mainly classified into the following types. Container ships, bulk carrier ships, tanker ships, passenger ships, naval ships, offshore ships, and special purpose ships. So these are the uh, types or categories uh, of classification of ships. Eh? A container ships, as you know, is a container ships, usually referred to liner services, right? You can see frequently in the in the in the in the news in the TVs in the YouTube and about container ships, but carrier ship also related to the type of 
uh, uh, shipping can be liner, can be also tank, right? But usually, uh, container is referring to liner. Lah. Uh, liner, as you all know, is a common carrier, right? Uh, but tram is a special, a specialized arrangement carrier eh? by agreement or by chartering. Eh? Uh, so, bulk carrier can be liner, can be tram, but usually it's a tram chartered, eh? because the amount, the magnitude of the cargo they carry, eh? uh, based on one owner cargo or two owners cargo. Right, and then the tankers, like I speak just now, tanker also uh, was classified as a ship. They're carrying, uh, usually when you talk about tanker, you carrying uh, ONG lah, ONG. But sometimes you can carry also other liquid things like palm oil, right? Everything, but, but all liquid, li li liquidified uh, cargoes. But usually when you talk tanker, refer to ONG lah. Passenger ships, uh, passenger ships, there's... They also have a, a personal ship that have a liner service. Like, liner service is common carrier ships, common carrier or passenger ships. Uh, uh, for example, like uh, Penang Ferry, kan? Penang Ferry pun they can, can consider liner service lah. Tapi short short distance kan? Uh, but because of short distance, they call it ferry, right? Uh, kalau macam, usually when you uh, provide a liner se passenger service, they call it ferry lah. And uh, at the big, either the, the ferry is like a ship that can carry cars inside, or the, the ferry is like a ferry in Penang. Lah. But they call, still call a ferry because you have commu like commuter services. You go by hours, go by this, go, and commuting people from point A to point B in distance by sea. Lah. Uh, example like the what the Langkawi, eh? Langkawi and Kuala Police and Kuala Kada, or even those days they have Langkawi Penang. They have Penang or Medan on those days. There is so there is a liner service lah, liner service. Uh, tapi they call it ferry, and yeah, they don't call it ship, right? Uh, but they carry passengers, right? Uh, so nowadays they can carry cars also, right? To Langkawi. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, what liner service for passenger, lah. okay? In Malaysia, mostly on tourism, eh? on tourism, right? Uh, those days, they, they they even have planned to have to make a bridge from Langkawi to Kuala Perlis. A bridge, right, to expedite the growth of Langkawi Island. But it's quite far, 45 minutes uh, by boat. Eh? Uh, you want to build a bridge. Uh, the problem is that it's quite far. And then, uh, considering the cost is high, and also not all people are willing to drive the cars through storms eh? or, 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 or through reboot apa-apa, through this bridge. Berani ke nak, nak lalu kan? Uh, tengah laut kan? Jadi, the CBA, cost benefit analysis, is not worth eh? it. Better to maintain the ferry services and the uh, what the, the, the aircraft, eh? airline services to Langkawi, that's all. Right? <coughs> Never ships, uh, ships for military. Right, a navy they call navy. Eh? Naval, a naval is a ship. Navy is the uh, army, eh? the military. Uh, so this, this so they, they also have ships. Eh? The many ships for military and ships. Uh, naval ships uh, play a very important role in war. Eh? In the war, you can imagine, you can you can see in the videos or whatever in YouTube, whereby in every war, especially in the Second World War, uh, uh, the role of maritime, uh, the role of ships. Uh, have a very strategic importance in terms of uh, winning uh, what a war, right, for a country. See uh, by how the the what the army for uh, the what the the army for the U.S. army bombarded Japan through the from the sea, right? And they allowed the tembak uh, a distance thirty kilometers, twenty kilometers from the sea. Uh, just imagine. Uh, so they bombard the, the 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 land from the sea. So uh, by by doing that, they collapse. They are try to collapse, collapsing all the uh, strategic locations of the enemy army, right? Uh, by bombarded it from the from the sea from the ships, right? That's why you can see naval ships. They have guns, very big guns. Uh, because to reach a distance. Eh? 
ha, nak sampai jarak yang jauh kena gun yang besar lah uh, nowadays they do you don't you have guns but they use rockets uh, no no more guns eh? uh, less uh, less gun they use rockets uh, missiles from the ships to the to the to the what to the land right so naval ship also part of the classified type of ships offshore ships offshore ships referring to the oil and gas oil and gas uh, drilling uh, centers offshore atau pelantai minyak tu pelantai minyak di laut kan uh, dia panggil offshore ships eh? they are ship actually because they they be moved they be mobilized by ships uh, by floating on the on the, on the, in, the in the sea the the ship pull it uh, the tugboat pull the ships about pull the what the uh, what the offshore ships to the locations for drilling uh, right and some are being carried by the ships but the way they carry it, the ship is very specialized ships uh, to carry the offshore ships uh, right so uh, you can see in the national geographic documentary how they do it eh? how do you do it for Petronas, uh, Petronas ONG platform or the uh, LNG platform process. It's, very, it's a mega project, it's mega structures, how they carry it through seas. And these are offshore because they station the the, 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 the things offshore, uh, like uh, to drill uh, ONG and li- apa? Uh, liquefied LNG. Lah. <coughs> and then offshore here, and then specialized purpose ships. Specialized purpose ships, like I told before, is a specialized purpose with a, with a purpose. A ship that been built with a purpose. One purpose. Example, generator ship. One purpose is to supply electricity. Yeah, medical or the hospital ships. One purpose is to, to provide medical services to the people. All right. Okay. Uh, they, they are... Uh, apa? Once certain ships for for unity, world unity, <coughs> like like uh, example the Nippon Maru ship, they buy the they mobilize they mobilize uh, what uh, youth youth eh, around the world uh, to be united eh, on the ships and uh, but know each other and they move the, the ships uh, from place to place and get to know the youth there. They call it Nippon Maru ships. So many type of ships, eh? Later you will see, lah. Okay. Any question to now? So, kalau roro ship mm-hmm. ni under special purpose? Roro ship. Ah, uh, roro ship is special purpose ship for carrying vehicles. Oh, so it's uh, roro on roro special purpose, ah. Ah, uh, because some some uh, type of vehicles. They don't. They don't build a uh, manufactured uh, at the location. They care. They they must be carried from the manufacturing plant to the location. Uh, it's cheaper to do that rather than to build uh, a factory. Usually, uh, what happen is that. <coughs> remember when Proton want to make the introductions of the cars in Turkey, right? Uh, they don't go straight to build a factory there. They try to test the market first uh, by exporting a certain amount of cars to Turkey and even to some Europe, uh, some African countries, right? Uh, when the is good and the demand is always there, it's good, then they will decide either to uh, uh, make a factory there, uh, to build a factory there to produce proton cars. If not, it's st- uh, they should maintain by exporting through the rural. Understand? Uh, that's the that's the reason lah uh, why they use roro to mobilize yes, ago. Okay, and some also some uh, special purpose ships like uh, uh, uh eight ships eh uh, uh, eight relief ships eight AID eight eh per 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 eight ni per pertolongan lah pertolongan bantuan kemanusiaan ah sometimes they use roro. That's why uh, you can see. In the news, sometimes you can see uh, the uh, UN, UN ships, one of uh, white colors, uh, they use Roro to carry uh, military equipment for UN, peacekeeping uh, troops, eh? UN peacekeeping troops, UN are the peacekeeping troops, eh? uh, especially in area or border that been uh, this area of conflict, 
uh, whereby both parties don't want to uh, uh, agree to to stop the conflict, but nobody's need uh, nobody's want to want to foresee it. So they need uh, third parties to foresee it. So uh, they use uh, UN uh, peacekeeping troops to go to be uh, to safeguarding the whole uh, the whole apa nama ni, place of uh, conflict so that they won't quarrel again. They won't fighting again because if they fight, the suffering the suffering is to the people. They are stupid. Eh? They are fighting, but the their own country people suffering. And uh, why I say is stupid because. They need somebody else from outside to help them to control them. Stupid lah. They be controlling themselves for the people, for the sake of their people, the safety of the people. Your own people country. But they still don't want. They still want to control each other and they need somebody else, like outsiders, to control it. Uh, that is stupid lah. For fully Malaysia is not that level lah. Right? No, no, okay? Uh, so, uh, this happened to African countries. Some African countries lah. Uh, they are each other, uh, civil war, no civil war, perang saudara. They are fighting among themselves. But the fighting, uh, they punya collateral damage, ataupun kesan daripada fighting tu, rakyat dia sendiri yang merani. Their own people suffering. Stupid, right? Uh, but they cannot stop this fighting. They need somebody else to stop them. So they go for uh, UN peacekeeping. And the US peacekeeping to mobilize Logistically, to mobilize all the supplies, they're using ships. Uh, even the material, the, the artilleries, the, the vehicles, everything, they use Roro. Right? So Roro is very practical for a special purpose for moving cargoes and also for navels. Naval, naval, naval purpose lah. Naval, maksudnya perperangan eh, for the armies. Eh. To carry big, big tanks, they don't use aircraft. They use aircraft, but uh, they cannot carry a lot. But they use ships. You can carry around 100, 200 tanks in the ship, big ships, eh, carrier. All right? So, uh, it's still important, eh, the Roro. Right? And the F? I hope you understand about my explanations. Yes. Apa lagi? Faham tak? Faham tak? Apa lagi? Faham, faham, sir. Uh, ni checking time, eh. Oh, tani, tiny tanya, eh. Uh, checking times, are you sleeping or not? Adam Azroy. Adam lagi kita. Adam? Saya, saya tu. Ah, bagus. Good example. Adam tak tidur, bagus. Kalau submarine. Submarine is under naval eh. Okay. Uh, submarine under naval and special purpose. So, special purpose. Eh, ni siapa? Muhammad Farhan, 3-2-8 ni apa ni? Oh, ni. Ni eh. Sam eh. Sam is the break eh. Alright, so kalau you tanya about submarine, submarine is special purpose. Submarine especially uh, for naval and special purpose. Right, naval ni biasalah pegangan uh, nak the submarine. Why submarine is important in the war? Because uh, you know uh, in the war, the, the, if, we, if we have the advantage of uh, penetrating the enemy's line without being noticed, that one is a uh, very uh, what, strategic advantage lah. Faham tak? Uh, so, cara apa yang tak boleh dapat tahu bila masuk ke line, sama ada cara laut atau cara udara. Faham tak? Uh, udara ni pakai yang apa? Uh, aircraft yang uh, anti-radar. Anti-radar eh? Anti-radar aircraft. Or that one you can penetrate enemy lines without being knowing by by radar. But uh, common radar cannot know lah. Sophisticated radar they can know. Ada cara dia pula. Uh, macam radar kat Malaysia ni tak boleh tahu lah. Kata bang apa, kata bang uh, Amerika masuk yang anti-radar tu, kita boleh tahu kan. Uh, kalau kita tahu pun tak boleh buat apa kan. Boleh buat apa kan. Uh, kita tak, kita punya army tak kuat. Faham tak? Uh, Navy kita tak kuat. Uh, airline kita, air, air force tak kuat. Kita bolehlah pertahankan negara kita. Tapi setakat pertahan lah. Kita nak counter balik China tak boleh. Nak compare dengan China is beyond comparison right. Kita dengan China punya army. Uh, that, that's why with China, with, you can imagine with China trespassing our our waters, right? In uh, in maritime, they trespassing our waters. We can't do much. Malaysia cannot do much because you can compare the punya arsenal, you know, arsenal, your punya military arsenal, dengan kita punya military arsenal. It's beyond comparison, comparison, right? That's why we just boleh buat bantahan secara diplomatik saja. 
Ai pergi kat depan eh, janganlah masuk kita ni tak tanpa beritahu kan kena beritahu lah kena hormatlah itu saja. Uh, macam yang Amerika lain dia boleh threaten you masuk kita kita tembak you masuk kita tembak. Ah uh, nak. Jadi kita tak boleh. Kita buat gitu nanti kita kena tembak bukan dia kena tembak kan. Ha uh, nampak. So this are the diplomacy that we 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 need to have lah when we deal with big countries lah. Big Arsenal countries like America and, and China. Uh, we must be very careful uh, uh, in terms of uh, our action so that we, we won't spark any any war lah. any what they call it any physical uh, confrontations eh? we have only diplomatic confrontation is okay but not physical uh, because physical we will lose lah. we don't talk about that lah, eh? we will lose that's why uh, like I told just now summary ni yang special purpose ada special purpose meaning that For research, research purpose, they have their own submarine. Marine research purpose, they have a small submarine for them. Ah, that one, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, tapi others and that, cargo tak ada. Eh? Cargo submarine tak ada. Cargo ni uh, submarine untuk war saja, Untuk perang saja, Tak ada cargo. Eh? Uh, ship ada. Right. Tapi special purpose ada. Uh, untuk study ke. Untuk buat apa ni. Untuk buat uh, SAR. Safe and rescue kan. Macam. MH370 tu kan, 370 uh, yang jatuh tu kan, uh, pakai submarine, check, itu pun tak jumpa, pakai ni pun tak jumpa, pakai scan pun tak jumpa, nama dia pergi dah tahu kan. Sampai sekarang pun, kan family yang terlibat lah, tak tahu hidup ke mati kan, tapi selalunya mati lah kan, tapi tak, tak confirm kan. Alright, siapa yang boleh claim tu? Yes. Yang ini, ya? Tak kapal tu bangilan tu tak logik. Tak logik, ah tak tahu lah. Ada yang kata tak logik, ada yang kata tapi tak logik. Kapal tu gimana? Hilang tu logik lah, dah hilang lah. Cari hilang tu tak tahu jana. Kan? Ah kalau kalau tak logik, mesti jumpa balik kan? Tak hilang, ni hilang. Dan orang yang dalam katuang pun tak boleh balik rumah pun kan. Kau tiba-tiba hilang, tiba-tiba ada passenger balik rumah dia kan. Eh, ha, itu baru tak logik kan. Macam mana ni kapal hilang orang balik kan. Ha, ni orang, orang passenger pun tak balik. Kan, ha, jadi hilang memang hilang. Tapi punca hilang tak tahu. Kapan hilang tak tahu. Yang itu tak logik kan. Dengan high tech ni teknologi ni, even the aircraft itself is high tech, masih tak tahu kat mana. I think some, some, somebody is is, is uh, hiding something because tak logik because that Boeing is the is the latest Boeing after September 11 tak? September 11 kan uh, kapal terbang hentam uh, World Trade Center kan uh, because of that they create a new policy that uh, aircraft can be controlled by somebody uh, by, by by center faham tak? by Boeing center the aircraft can be controlled by Boeing center tahu tak? Maksudnya dia overrule pilotnya control. If the cases needed lah. Right. Ha, macam nak elakkan, nak elakkan dia hentam bangunan ke hentam betekon ke kan. Ha, dia can overrule the the pilot control. Ha, it, kata bang sekarang macam tu. Yang Boeing punya. Faham tak? Dia boleh control. Tapi because of because of that I mean, walaupun although they have that technology they still don't know. Logik tak? Tak logik lah kerana tu. Kan? Cara dia hilang tu tak logik. Katakan tak jumpa. Ha, tak tahu ke mana. Sebab apa? Sepatutnya dia tahu. Ha, there must be something they hiding. I don't know why they hiding. Ha? Dia bawa kat bang bawa kaku yang bahaya ke? Kaku yang bahawa dia tak tahulah. Tapi kenapa dia nak hiding? Ha. Dah lama kan kan? Berpuluh tak? Dah belas tahun lah. Kesian eh. Eh belas tahun lah. Eh? tahun 2014 eh 2014 ah uh, dekat 10 tahun okey so it think it, it happens uh, but coincidentally it happened to Malaysia airline nasiblah tak baik kan Malaysia airline yang kena kan lepas tu pula kena tembak dengan Rusia pula Malaysia airline juga uh, nasib <laughs> Malaysia airline ni nasiblah kan buat macam mana kan tiba-tiba nak tembak pula you just imagine eh you nak kau terbang kena tembak tapi kata apa, tersilap ingat kata bang musuh. Ha, kalau bahasa kasar ni pula otak dengan jauh kan. Kata bang penumpang pun tak tahu kan. 
kan dia ada meja tu ada meja kod dalam dalam radar penumpang ke ataupun aircraft ke fighter tapi dia tembak juga mati beberapa ratus orang mati kata eh. kan berterabur habis so that's why next time you naik kapal terbang you just pray to God that you safe landed at the airport tu je anything can happen in aircraft and studies uh, say that the most dangerous part of uh, flying is take off and landing so ada banyak you know the documentary national geographic on aircraft accidents eh? banyak accident berlaku semasa nak landing dan masa nak take off ah uh, you jangan you know, ingat dah sampai nak sampai dah okey kan tak tak sana nak turun tu jam ada something jam masalah masalah besar kan nak turun je Engine, engine mati, tak boleh hidup. Ah, P. Tak boleh control speed, kan? Ha, so, you be careful lah. Jangan ingat kat terbang, best, cepat. Oh, enjoy nak pergi bercuti, kan? Tapi, in the in the car aircraft tu, you kena pray a lot. So that you reach your destination safely. Any problem, memang nak, nak 100% safe, safe. Tapi, 0.01% problem je, you will cry like hell in the aircraft, faham tak? Always, always got kan <laughs> you tak nak kena lagi eh? uh, you kena tak banyak banyak lah you kena air pocket cukup tahu air pocket tak you terbang 35,000 feet tengah-tengah makan kat terbang bergoyang jatuh Vuk. jatuh terus ke bawah tu Vuk. you just imagine macam nak gugur jantung tu ha, apa masa tu kita ingat lain lah makan pada lalu dah kan ha It's something, it's something, something that uh, even pilot cannot cannot solve the problem lah. So suddenly the pressure changes immediately kan. Boom, dia jatuh. Jatuh sekejap dalam a few thousand feet, then dia stabilize balik. Itu pun you tak sangka lah kan. Tengah mati dia kan. Hmm. So that is aircraft. But that's why, apa nama ni, uh, but it, one advantage of aircraft transportation is, is faster lah. Cepat kan. Kalau tak, memang orang naik kapal senang kan. Uh, kapal lebih selamat. Uh, kalau pebahal sempat juga terut kan. Ini tak sempat lah kan. Kalau pebahal terjun semua kan. Hmm. Takut terjun laut dan meletup. Uh, tak ada chance selamat lah. Uh, itu kalau aircraft lah. Eh. So, the terbit buat aircraft lah. So, as a transporter, you need to know many aspects of mode eh. I can teach you aircraft, air, airline, air, air transport. I can teach you airport design, airport, airport management. I can take you port management, I can take you road transport, I can take you rail transport. So I've been teaching all this while before this, all the all the modes. So I can explain a bit on that the, on the modes. Eh? <coughs> I can explain about AITA and I can explain about ICAO. Right? <coughs> so, tak, tak, tak sempat nak check attendant eh, aku tanya macam-macam lah. So we continue eh, we continue. Ya harap-harap semua hati lah eh. Semua pelik lah eh. Bukan tidur. Okay. So we proceed. The next slide. We focusing on container ships. We will fo- focus all class- classified ships just now. But we focus on my Although I explain a little bit. Kadang-kadang I explain ahead for the. Tapi uh, I will come back again. But I detail eh. Okay. Container ships, type of container ships. Containers vessels have been through various phases. Right? So a couple of container, container ships has been, has gone through many stages in their uh, service. So the phases can be classified as generations. Start mula pakai sampai sekarang. First generation of container ship is 1956. Sebelum Malaysia Merdeka dah ada container ship. Eh. The first generation, they carry limited cargo, limited container. Uh, 1956 to 1970, quite quite long. Eh. 56, 66, 70, 14 years. 14 years first generation. Right? At that time, uh, uh, container ship is getting popularity in in carrying containers. Eh? 
But the amount of containers they carry is not like today. Lah. Eh? Second generation is 70 to 80, 10 years. It's progressing. Third generation, 80 to 88, 8 years. Right? Fourth generation, 88 to 2000. 88 to 12 years. Right? Fourth generation, 2000 to 2005. And now it's the sixth generation of container ships. Uh, 26 to till today. Okay. So, how the progress of development of container ships from 1956 to till now? Kita mereka dalam kita mereka sudah enam puluh tujuh, enam puluh empat, enam puluh empat, enam puluh lima, enam puluh enam tahun, enam puluh tujuh tahun lah container. <coughs> Dari kapal yang kecil kepada kapal yang sebapa bapa kapal ya. <laughs> Yang bertingkat-tingkat tinggi kan. Uh, so, the progress. Eh? This is, you can just imagine, this shows how the world economic growth are getting from 1956 till now. You can see the ship size. The size is growing, 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 growing something. Uh, 20,000 containers can carry as compared to only less than 1,000 containers from the beginning. Now, 34,000. Just imagine the leap, the progress eh, uh, that the world economy is making after the Second World War. Usually, we end up the World War is 48, right? 48, 14, 48, lah, they end up because the bomb attack and the bomb attack went 48. Uh, to the, the after effect of the war will take another two, three years. Walaupun war itu mas dah habis 48, tapi kesan the war itu still terasa sampai dua tiga tahun. <coughs> Lamanya. Then only the world progress <coughs> to develop uh, economically. Uh, from that, the uh, uh, 1950s to the start, 1950, 50, the start progressing actively economy. Masa tu lah, uh, people keep thinking how to move cargo quickly, right? So they, they invented container. Those days, no container. They carry by hand. They carry by cranes only. A brick bag cargo, right? They don't put in container. Even finished product also, they they put in in cartridges, in boxes, carry by cranes. It's very tedious. It's very slow the process, one by one to transfer from the ships to the to the port and the port to the lorries or train, right? It's it's slow lah. Then they invented the container. Who invented the container? Who knows? Ah. Huh. The one, the person who invented the containers is the person who deal with freight transportation. They have a company of freight transportation. <coughs> and because uh, that's why they, he keep on thinking how to expedite the whole process. So they, they thought of uh, yeah, unitize all the cargo in the one one box, standardized box. And uh, that's why you have ISO standard containers, 20 footers and 40 footers only. Uh, right, no, no bigger container than that. Uh, if bigger, there is the ordinary container lah. Tapi selalunya according to world standard T use. <coughs> okay, so why is important to have standard? Because in order to all the ports in the world can have a standardized MHE, standardized material handling equipment <coughs> to handle the cargo. Bila standardized semua, cepatlah proses. Dia angkat semua, dia dah, sampai ke port, dah, dah, dah ada crane tunggu yang boleh, boleh, boleh handle containers. Because all container size are the same, build the crane according to the size, standard size. Senang nak movement. And then all the lorries are the same size of the containers, right? Semua so, TEUs, right? Uh, all the trains have, uh, have a, a fixed size of the coach to carry containers. Either one single decker or double decker container coach. So, this all... Uh, uh, speed the whole process of mobility eh, of the cargo. And then in 1956, they start the container ships eh, until today. You see the progress. Eh? <coughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> types of container ships on basis of sizes. Uh, <coughs> these sizes usually you refer to uh, the, the, pet, the canal. Eh? Canal. <coughs> There are two big canals in the world that are very important canals. 
One is a Swiss Canal, the other one is Panama Canal. So that's why the ship uh, per container size based on the canal. You know why? Because the canal has <coughs> limitations. Canals are main made, main made uh, structure that uh, cut out, cut off the land, uh, initial land, uh, so that ship can go through from the, this globe to the other part of the globe by cutting the uh, the intermediate land. The most uh, minimum size in terms of the land, they will cut there. <clears throat> and they will allow a uh, ship to travel. One, once you talk about uh, man-made infrastructure of uh, shipping, meaning that there are limitations. If man-made is limitation, you just imagine uh, road are man-made, right? Road and rail are man-made, right? Road and rail are limitations. <clears throat> Sebab tu ada congestion. Because road at the limit there, they cannot cope too many traffic. Then they congested. Some of the rail, they only move one one at a time, because one rail aja. Or you build two rails at the same time is a cost, a high cost. But you can move two traffic uh, simultaneously. If, but if, if not, you only only have one one track. You only move one rail. That's why if one track you have. Uh, real, uh, uh, real, 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 real coach. They have two, two, two heads, right? Uh, Ketapi ada dua kepala. <coughs> kalau jalan ke belakang, kepala belakang bawa. Dan nak batas balik naik atas, kalau kepala belakang masih lagi bawa. So two heads selalunya lah. Uh, kalau one one track, for double track, yes, they can go different ways, lah. Uh, understand? But highly high, costly to build, eh? That is limitations. Eh? That's why, uh, apa nama ni, uh, in road, they have congestions. In rail, they have a delay. Uh, especially when something happened to the train, the whole track cannot be used. I need to settle the problem first. <clears throat> And also, uh, but maritime, uh, the, the the way is natural way. There's no, no, no limitation. Okay, uh, cuma limitation at the port saja. Port ni man-made kan? Uh, port tu ada limitation. Lepas tu uh, ship queuing, uh, congested at the port. Because port is uh, man-made, ada limitation. But the way, uh, the way of the maritime is not man-made, it's natural. So it's open. No limitation. So very open, very big, very vast. Same like air transport. The way is the air. Eh? The air, the, 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 the air lah. So the, the way is natural. So no limitation on the air. The limitation is at the port only. At the airport. That's why the delay. Uh, lambat lah, penumpang tak cukup lah, apa semua kan, at the port. But the way is no limitation. But road and rail ada. Right? <coughs> That's the reason lah. Why uh, they, they, they put the, what, the ship size based on the size of the canal. Because the canal has been expanded. <coughs> expanding and expanded <coughs> right from panama to post panamax right from swiss max to post swiss max from malacca street to malacca max uh that's all you understand why the what does it mean by all these things eh? any question <coughs> any question do you understand Okay. Good. All right. I think we stop here because you need to join other class. So far, no question. Okay, good. Uh, any question you can ask me, right? <clears throat> It's very interesting eh, to learn maritime. Even to learn air transport also is interesting. <clears throat> right? The many aspects of air transport or maritime that you need to learn. But uh, you cannot know all. Uh, based on one cost, right? And then, uh, you know, extra courses, lah. Tapi, since that the program only consists of maritime management, one course, and seaport management, one course. So, uh, we try to try to provide you the best, lah, uh, in one course. All right? Okay. So, no questions.
uh, we stop here. Okay, so uh, any more requests from you all? <coughs> any question, any request? Um, sir, sorry saya nak tanya balik pasal assignment 1 tadi boleh? Pasal apa? Um, yang kami nak resubmit the report tu Sir akan ubah the system for us to resubmit ke? Uh, Or the other start. group member boleh submit? Macam ni, yang, yang submit uh, tu That's why I need to know the seven group Right, so that you can submit to me Individually lah No more Sir. to portal eh I won't, I won't change the portal lah Okay, so send to you personally through WhatsApp or like email macam tu ke? WhatsApp tak apa. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, tapi WhatsApp you send through group WhatsApp. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because I tak save nama nombor you kan. Nanti you hantar individual dia. I, 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 I tak nengok satu hari WhatsApp berpuluh-puluh masuk WhatsApp. So, I takut miss. Faham tak? Dia nama tak simpan kan? Dia tak tahu lah. Uh, jadi, tu the best is you go to the uh, group WhatsApp. Uh, Jepun nak jadi takap ni nak group nombor berapa kan uh, siapa leader dia uh, take nombor dan submit lah kan okay. kalau boleh bagi semua nama tak apa kan so dia tak tahu lah ok thank you so much sir ha. <coughs> so I won't I won't I won't apa nama ni open a new portal system for student submission uh, the seven group that want to submit again you need to submit through the whatsapp group And by mention your group member and your members, right? Uh, so that I can know lah, uh, this is yours, eh? right? All uh, Kalau boleh, WhatsApp sekali. Maksudnya, uh, jangan WhatsApp buat judul betul dah lama pun WhatsApp. Kalau pun, takut orang yang masuk. Bila orang yang masuk, dah bertindih kan? Uh, jadi, saya confused, right? Uh, jadi, better make sure uh, words and uh, PowerPoint, eh? PowerPoint dah apa? Turn in kan? Turn in tu sekali, eh? Dengan words. Maksudnya berturutan lah. Jangan kerap nama sangat. Takut masuk wasal lain. Dia tak boleh. Bila masuk wasal lain nanti dia dah dia dah bertindih kan. Dia dah, dah, dah hilang nanti. Jadi saya terlupa kan. Okay. Faham? Uh, yang saya lewat tu se- dapat receive ke? Ke saya nak kena hantar lagi? Tak apa ni? Macam ni? Dapat tapi dia malu hewan tak ada hujam. Tapi tak ada masalah dah. Dia nak betul lagi. Itulah tak apalah nanti saya bincang balik dengan saya punya team. Ha. Okey. Okey okay, doktor. Alright. So tak ada apa lagi? Alright. So <coughs> mau team lagi. Ya <coughs> attendance please take note eh because Attendance ni uh, walaupun online tak ada tak ada buat tak ada bar ada lah. online ada bar ada pak setakat ni saya tak ada bar time online kan tapi uh, tak sure rekod awak tak ada banyak kan eh apa yang tak ada tu make sure uh, next class hadir lah jangan sak hadi sak hadi sak hadi sak hadi so you won't get 80% right so you must uh, come all the All, all the time for the class okay so I observe ramai ke yang tak ada ada ke yang tak ada ke yang kan dari kelas kan? kalau boleh work that now eh <coughs> come to the class susah apa sekarang online kan betul tak online ni tak payah ke benda mana awal oh, barang yang terkata pun saya dah tahu kan betul tak kecuali saya suka video kan ha. so tetap lah kelas eh? join scan attendance kan eh? Attender pun saya, scan attender pun saya bagi time banyak kan. Tak buat join, tak buat scan. Okay, tak buat join during the class eh. Oh, ikut the class timing eh. Okay. So, thank you very much. Uh, we stop here today. So, we continue the next class. Uh, uh, ini apa? Ini Rabu eh. Hmm, Rabu. So, Sunday nak Sunday eh. Alright. So, thank you. And good luck. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.